It's all y'all. So you got. Is it, what about sums all? Sums, sums it all. Up. Su, su, sums all. Hey, that sums it all up. <laughs> that, that, that about sums it all up for us. It's uh, like I'm fixing to get ready to come over there and do I'm, something. I'm fixing. Sums all. All righty. With that, we are live. <laughs> hey guys. What are you drinking today? Yeah. W- What's up? Welcome. Everybody? Welcome to uh, what are you drinking now uh, tonight on this holiday, this uh, Memorial Day holiday? Uh, hey, want to take that real quick second to uh, uh, acknowledge the the reason for the holiday. The uh, those who did not come back, we want to thank you. Um, for allowing everybody to do what we do today, including be silly on this show. So, absolutely, yeah. Um, it's one of those things. I know it might sound cheesy, but freedom is not free. Yeah, we celebrate the service all the time, but really the sacrifice that goes with the service is really what we memorial as a remember today. Yep. Um, so, with that, uh, why don't we uh, go ahead and what are you guys drinking now? I'm drinking the Wild Side. Taking from a Winchester. walk on the wild side from Winchester Cider out of Virginia. You know, I pulled a no-brainer. I just really needed a beer, and Rob was taking forever during sound check. Uh, I was. And so I have a Prima Pills in front of me. You guys know I drink those. But from Victory. Minutes. Out of, uh, um, now out of Charlotte as well. Yeah, I think with the light blue label, I really love that pickup. I've mentioned it a few times. And then uh, I'd even like to look further, like, if they're really going to adapt the skyline uh, to be more Charlotte reflective. Or, well, um, they are They are originally out of... Uh, downtown PA, so yeah. just outside of Philly. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, just a challenge out there. However, uh, something I'm going to crack open, it's still chilling. It hadn't quite got it in the cooler. However, I noticed it's the next dog going in the IPA shelf. So I thought Noda. I'd uh, make sure to get that on the palate tonight. Uh, but I couldn't get it in front of... My taster. Ooh. So uh, I'll be getting to the note. I'll probably throw some notes in on that pretty shortly. All righty. Health cleansing. Man, I'm gassy tonight. Hey, with that, welcome back, Josh. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm back. Ha- back had a good vacation coast. last week. I keep oh yeah. This noise. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, last week was rather quiet, and and, <laughs> and we didn't have the gassiness of Josh. No, to, we were back in Studio One. Too. Yeah, yeah. Was, now, now we're in what two B or something? Yeah, two B. Yeah, not two B. Yeah, the on air light is on outside. Yeah. Um, but no, no. Yeah, I made it back safe and sound from Ochre Cope. Uh, a few more bug bites and. I was, was going to say, I heard, heard you woke uh, up one night just like covered in gnats. Everything was great until the wind stopped blowing. And then um, the swarm came. Yeah. You know, uh, also, you were covered in sunburn when you came on back. But uh, it wasn't that bad. Speaking of bats, well, I you're, think you're, you got that skin off. Your back. Yeah, your your neck was peeling like a lizard. So. <laughs> yeah, I was molting. Uh, you know, the reptilian I, blood is strong. I felt like me, I so. felt like he was walking around like one of those aliens from that old TV show V. It's, I thought it was one of the skin <laughs> Like our our friend Josh went to the beach and a cicada came yeah. back. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah Bruce and, and, left and his for me, shell. I'm drinking the B Nectar a cider, of course. Uh, the Zombie Killer. We got it back in stock, and uh, it's solid, man. Solid, like some B Nectar. Man, I'm really thinking this should be my palate cleanser. This thing so, um, I know we, I know one of the beers. I actually don't know what Josh's beer. I, I think I knew it, but forgot it. No, I do know what Josh's beer is. Both of your beers, I think, can go before the wine. They're all light tonight, but I think let's, let's start with. Maybe Josh, is that gonna blow the the fruit scents here? Mine does have fruit in it. Um, mine probably does too. Yeah, it, it, his does. It's lemon. Mine's a super fruit, and it's a, supposed to be a heavier style beer. Let's go with his. Let's go with his because I think if we were at a party, this is probably how we'd run it. Yeah, and that's what both these are. Is uh, it's Memorial Day, so arguably, I think Josh and I both grabbed cooler beers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tonight. I mean, just because you know it's, it has been a weekend of barbecuing and ah, oh, I barbecued drinking. yesterday. Ate more chicken wings today. He is right. I, so, I ate I ate leftovers of of what I did on Saturday yesterday. <laughs> what do you got, Josh? <laughs> All right, so I have the Island Limonada, which is brewed by Island brands. <laughs> Made for easy drinking. Island Brands USA, Auburndale, Florida. 
So, so I yeah. believe they specialize in lagers and things like that. It, well, it's funny because this and there's a peach version that is also they're both listed as. Are they shandies or is they are they listed as premium beer with all natural flavors? So um, yeah, who knows? So this is supposed to be like a lemonade lager, I guess. Which is kind is of like it, the is it listed shandy? as a lager? Probably not. I thought it said lager, but maybe it's the other choice that we have from Island that says lager, and this one is what he said. I'd be willing to bet it's a lager. I throw at least five dollars down on that bet. Oh, yeah! You get to show the label. The label kind of reminds me of this thing that I've had around my uh, house. Uh, uh, English store bitters. The uh, it's somewhere. Be- the label's somewhere between like a San Pellegrino label and like the English store bitters, and it, just the way the stamping is, which kind of gets me into this whole like Caribbean vibe with it. So what's the ABV on this guy? Four or five. Four or five. Two seventy five, right? Yep. Two seventy five can. So solid, low gravity. <sighs> smells like cool, lemonade. cooler grabber. Yeah, this is something. It smells like lemonade. Yeah, it smells like summer shandy. I mean, the very like country time candy side of lemonade. Yep. Not necessarily. This like is fresh this breeze. is. It smells like a lemon head. You know, and this type of uh, if I do a fruit to beer. I normally like this type of fruit of beer with the with peel and eat shrimp. And I when I go you to know, the pro code, that's what I get is a lemon I appreciate beer. that the label said like a beer with fruit. Like they're really making this clear. This thing is very fruity. This is definitely yeah. and limonada, like I made the joke about the San Pellegrino, but this really does kind of resemble like the limonada. Oh yeah. Um but there is actually kind of a strong beery background to this though. Yeah. Like I can definitely tell that this is a beer with stuff and not just something that is alcoholic and lemonade. I'm not gonna call it like, you know, uh breakfast biscuits on the palate, but like there is a biscuity quality to the malt. And after all the lemon quality stuff. And there's like a viscous nature to it. So it's like a little thicker than uh-huh. something like Mike's Hard or something like that would be. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, Which plays into kind of that what Josh and I, I guess we're getting at. Instead of a fresh squeezed lemonade, this is more of like your simple syrup, like preserved, reduced uh, lemonade kind of flavor in there. Uh, I don't get that fresh squeezed, pulpy feel. No, um, but at the same time, it's not off putting. I no. mean, I, I, no, I think I mean it, that in the utmost compliment way. Yeah, I, th- I like think a, that really fits well with with this beer. And like I said, I would drink this. Would peel and eat shrimp all day long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, shrimp, uh, scraps, any any like little, like your your uh, Brunswick boils, your, your uh, what do we call the low country boils? Low country boil, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, that kind of thing would be good. Uh, I mean, oh, right yeah. down here, lobster cause your crab. Crab would be great. Yep. You know, yep. blue crab stuff. Yeah, this is good pool that. beer. Pool Honestly, beer. It'd probably be good fishing beer. Yeah, because it's low ABV. Um, and with it's, high, e- it's easy like, to drink and push and hydration kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I mean, sweet. It, it was like 90 degrees outside, and this was ice cold. This would probably be the, really refreshing. Yeah. The tartness of the lemon, that's just what I was going to say. Well, I'm with Josh there. It kind of encompasses the real, like, just refreshing tartness of the lemon. And uh, maybe that's the appeal to the seafood, right? Is it kind yeah. of like that lemon zest? That's right. Because a lot of times you have, you know, you, you want a little citrus with, with and, your uh, seafood. Judging from my experience this past week at Ocracoke, if you had to share a cooler with your bait fish and your beer, like the taste of the lemon would putting kill a, some of the mullet water. Putting a Ziploc around each beer can. Because if you it. don't wipe the mullet water off and wash your beer off, your bell's too hard and will taste like a dead fish. I thought you were supposed to take it out of the bait cooler, take it down to the, the surf line, run it through the seawater, and then mm-hmm. open it. Yeah, but I mean, there's also fish in the water, too. Yeah, but... How, how'd that go, by the way? Did you see any of those fish out of the water? Yeah, we caught a few mm. mullet. Mullet? Nothing to eat? Well, you can eat mullet. Did you? No. Okay, so like nothing to eat. big breeding. Do you know the mullet out on Ocracoke? They're giant. They may not have been giants by the time he's there, but by, like, you get to the end of this month, they have, like, these wings. They jump out of the water. They look like zombie fish. You, you can't even get them to, like, bite a piece of bread on a hook. You have to just straight up net them. It's stupid. 
They're the dumbest fish I've ever seen, really. I mean, they're, they're not <laughs> smart fish. Are fish smart in particular? I I figure they hate their life um, so much when they're done breathing I'd that they just want to jump not. out of the water and die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think fish are particularly smart. I think some are smarter than others. Kind of like dogs. They eat flies, though. That's why they're jumping, right? Yeah. And, and it's a display with their wings. It's all part of the mating. I think that was pretty uh, pretty tasty. I'm not gonna lie, yeah, that was a. Uh, I I did. It's refreshing. I mean, that's a that's an outside beer. That's a. Yeah, play, I, mean, I, I'd, I would be really curious to try the peach and see how that one turns out. Play, playing I mean, games outside or all this, all doing the lawn outside or seafood. I, I'm just thinking, like, throw this down with like a three way chili dog. Get back to the game, no problem. Or fish know. sticks. <laughs> fish sticks. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't say. I saw that episode. Uh, not sardines, but uh, anchovies. I do love anchovies. No, I think the anchovies would overpower this All one. Right. So I guess. Uh, what else do we got? Well, yeah. Why don't, why don't we see uh, what Nick's going to bring to the table? <laughs> Josh looks like he's seen better days before. I. So last week, somebody asked us about. <laughs> You're just playing shake in your head. About low-cal, uh, low-carb beers. Um, and this I was this wow. was the one I was trying to think you were, of. You were stunned. You were speechless. I I, I, just, I knew it was from uh, Sweetwater. Oh. I just couldn't remember the name. Here's the best part of this, this thing right here. That's probably going to be the most enjoyable part of that. Sounds thing. like a beer so far. It feels really cold. I don't know if it gets colder than other beers. Uh, but it's it's very chilly. The can is average size, 12 ounces. It's got uh, Sweetwater's typical logo, but then giant where it says Better Days, kind of, sort of, IPA with super fruit. Also advertised around the rim of this beer is the fact that it's got 5 gram of carbs and I think 100 calories, 100 calories and 4% ABV with hint of real fruit. And actually, I would say overall, that's the easiest thing to read on this can, is what I just said. <laughs> Which had me thinking. Have either I, of you had this before? I feel like I've been marketed because right I have not had this yet. Choosing this beer, I haven't had it yet. How could just I not? Show you the... It it gave me all the best facts I need to know about a beer. And for a beer drinker in the modern world, Rob, how what many is, carbs? What, what is the super fruit? How many carbs? How many carbs by gra- uh, You know, by weight, and how much alcohol? That's it. That's all I need to know before my workout. But what is the super fruit? Uh. <laughs> is it a mungo berry? <laughs> mungo berry. Little joke that's on tap. Little here. goji berry lager. <laughs> I, I do. I'm sorry. I do like what they said on the back. <laughs> it says, uh, as you're sipping on this easy drinking IPA laced with notes of tropical fruits, we're raising a glass with you, thinking about better days behind and better days ahead. Either way, we know you're in a better place right here, right now, with this summer in a can in hand and an F 2020 finger in the air. <laughs> Right on, Sweetwater. Mm. I don't care how bad the beer is. <laughs> this is interesting. Maybe I did actually want to know how little sugar it had in it. So on the, Maybe that on the nose, it's, more it's about the taste. It's, I, I it's IPA-ish on the nose with fruit, lots like of like a hazy on the nose. I mean, almost not, like, not not quite the almost like purely just the essence of fruit. Yep. Like. Like, maybe this is why they use super fruit. Because they didn't have to use much of it. They just used a little bit without entering much sugar. And they could just flavor this thing, right? Okay, so that is different. Um, it finishes dry. It does not finish, like, the sweetness of fruit or fruit juice. It's they, like the, the side palate's gone. The, there, there's, just, there's flavor on the front and center and going to the back, but the, it, it dies it's on the side. It's almost as dry as, like, those... Stupid seltzers that it honestly it honestly review. tastes like that one beer in the mix pack you get there's one extra of that nobody actually wants. They're probably definitely putting this in those like variety packs. It's the Sweetwater Survival so, Pack. So here here's the thing though, um, this is one of over the last few years the 
light, light beers. This is the low carb, low calorie, low, yeah. You know, we've seen this trend from other breweries. You know, they've been trying to, to get something. Whether it's whether it's hit or not, I don't know. I mean, it takes a while for us to sell them and then move on. But this actually has been selling. I, you get the right customer. I don't like somebody who just wants to get pounded one day and they're like, I'll drink the, I only drink these light beers and they find this. Phrasing? Phrasing. <laughs> Probably. I'm not sure what I just said. Brittany, Brittany Redbeard, cover the kids' ears. What did I? Well, don't tell me what I said. Tell me later. Because uh, you know, I'm pretty sure I, 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 I feel, I feel like you meant to say words. get hammered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you said get pounded. No, nope, they're going to pound these. Pounders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you need a hammer if you're going to do pounding. But why does it take pounders to get hammered? <laughs> here's, <laughs> here's, your, here's your shovel, Nick. Keep digging. <laughs> It's fun to watch people dig holes. <laughs> Bro, are you in there? <laughs> All right. Well, I apologize for any misconstrued messages here. Uh, what Nick is saying and has been saying is simply that I don't think anyone's getting hammered or whatever you boys want schnockered off off this stuff. It's no, 4%. I, uh, <laughs> it's, how many of these um, could you drink? <laughs> flavor wise, I couldn't drink very many of them. I, I, it's not very appealing to me. I feel like I put this in my golf bag so I don't drink. I mean, it. I'm going to slam this one back just to get rid of it. This it's a, uh, we could just do that right now. And move there's on. just something on the back end of like the finish that I just, I don't find desirable. I mean, it's like almost nothing on the palate. I mean, I get, like, the fruit and stuff, and I get what they're trying to do with it, but I also believe that if you're trying, if you're, like, really watching your carbs, you really shouldn't be drinking beer. <laughs> Just go with the seltzer. Learn how to drink Sauvignon Blanc. Jennifer Philp Gromber wants to know, Cromer wants to know if it's Mongo Berry. You know, we don't know because it doesn't even say on the can. Oh, is that what Mongo Berry, the, 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 remember, you know, we all thought it was a raspberry. It's called Mongo Berry. But it's not a mango berry. No, it was. Or, the, it was the. Is mango? Jennifer falling for what I said? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, not Jeff, Jennifer. No, Jeffrey Philip Kramer. Why would I get Jennifer? Oh, and Jeffrey Jeff, what's confused? up, man? He he wants to know if it's mead or where the mead. He keeps shouting mead. Mead, yes. he likes mead. No. Hey, okay. hey, Jeff, just got to say, um, we do have uh, a special uh, shipment coming for you later this week. You're going to like it. Your credit card's not. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'll see you there. Um, okay, so... I don't know. It doesn't say what superfruit, did it? It doesn't say it, anything it's about that. Acai no. or, or what? It does not taste like there's a acai. Or acai. So, acai, acai. I'm, I'm going to add one other thing to it. So, it does say... <laughs> Three-syllable, four-letter word. Worst idea. That's what they mean by super fruit. It's super hard to understand what we're talking about. It's like a chocolate covered blueberry that has caffeine in it. You mean a mungo berry. So, I got one other thing to add to this. Mm hmm. Is it vodka? Where, where it says kind of sort of IPA. Is it? With super fruit right under it in small letters, it says malt beverage with natural flavors. So it's not. So it's, I don't even. Think it's considered a beer? Is it? Uh, Does that mean we don't actually have to rate it? Um, I've never wanted this palate cleanser so much. Where, where do I have to realize? <laughs> God, now I feel like I gotta share it real. If you wouldn't mind, how about uh, we are we are did Jeff? We we pounded it. You guys want to drink some real? If while if if on? you could. Uh, we're all Towel just, off the the we're bottle. All just I'll getting go ahead pounded over here. It's awesome. This looks like something I should really like, Rob. Oh, we do like this. There's several words on here I like. Some of them harder to say than others. So I'll pass this. For you. Thank it's you. Like wet. Ooh, wow. It's one of my new favorite wine words. Is definitely on here. Well, <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you. 
Because here, here's the thing on this guy. Um, I'm not even going to pretend. I know nothing about this bottle of wine. A little, little, little splishy. You know, radio haze tastes like. Splash, taking a bath. Yeah, because you might need a... Oh, God. Sorry. I asked you if you wanted beer here, and I just poured grapefruit juice in your glass. Oh, no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> So, uh, Nick, I'm going to let you... Um, like, if you said yes to grapefruit juice on an airplane... <laughs> <laughs> Can you make a Greyhound with this? No. <laughs> no. Let me know if you need to try some radio haze, Rob. No, no. But what I was saying is, you say you have some words that you, you recognize that are your new favorite words off here. Um, One begins with a P. I okay. see can. I like can. One begins with it. X. Okay. So, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to try to make anything up. I know nothing about this wine. Um, uh, one of I, our cooler, newer tasting I do reps, believe I was so. around for the tasting, but I think by the time I was, the tasting happened, I was probably ten other tastings in the bag. It was yeah, a very full... I, th- I, th- I think this one showed up on one of our okay. better gauntlet days. And it's possible it came at the be- near the beginning. Mm, I'm thinking. And then got, you know. I think it might have been somewhere in the middle. Muddled. Kevin usually gets here pretty early. Is this from Kevin? This is not from Kevin. Or is this from Chris? This is from Mr. Minker. Yeah, I thought so. Because they both actually brought over a, pe- a P. I'm going to let Rob say the word. I don't want to steal the thunder. Was it Penedas? Oh, that was pretty close, right? From what I recall. That was, yeah, the Penedas. Pen, Penedas. So basically, I'm pretty sure Robin are saying the same word, just slightly different inflection. Different, different dialect. Uh, that, yeah. yeah. We're yeah. pronouncing the totally same Totally different word. dialect. You were yeah, using, you're using northern dialect. I was using southern dialect. Southern. You usually do come at it from the south, though, don't you? I'm not sure if, that's, if I want to answer that. Here. Take your wine and shut up now. Uh, one way or another, this is going south. <laughs> Neither one of y'all have... like. I'm the only one at this table that's born and raised in the south. Can't help where I was born, buddy. But I've been adopted. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is... This is the... Con Sumwa. No, wait a minute. This is Spanish. So that is not right because... Uh, Sumoa would be French. So, Nick, you're the Spanish. Can you give a shot at this guy? Chirillo. That is the grape, correct? So, is this from, like, northern Spain? <laughs> what is... What is it's from Penedas. Which is northern Spain? What is Spain? the winery? Wow. Big... Big letters there. It looks like it says Can Sumwa. See, that's... But but that would be French, wouldn't it? Sumwa? Yeah, but if it's that far north in the Penedes region, it's practically Basque country. That's what I was about it, to say. This would be like Basque, which is like the weird in-between between How close to Sarcothe is this? It says it's Mediterranean also. Well, Penedes so, is recognized as Mediterranean. It's part of the Ibro. So it's east of Andorra. Well, that's Andorra gets really high altitude right where the Pyrenees are going down towards the Mediterranean, right? So, Out, not too far from Barcelona is Andorra, but I think this is a little further up the Ebro Valley where it starts getting uh, closer to um, Zagrotha. But I may be wrong here. What is Penedes region? Look it up, Nick. Come on. Rob, that's a lot of dead air you're giving us over there. Yeah, you don't, well, have, you don't have the Cubs games. So all right, gonna, so this is this is won. in this okay. is <laughs> this is in Spanish, so I'm going to um, God, the wrong guy's reading the bottle. Again. Yeah. So <laughs> they've been making they've been making wine since sixteen forty five at six hundred meters altitude. That's um, the huge part. It's it's huge altitude. Some vineyards it, 600 meters is not tons. And uh, 100, meters. 400 hectares. So 400 hectares. Do you think that's a large space, Rob, or, or actually quite a small estate to work in with a reasonable... 400 hectares isn't 
isn't small, but it's not super. So how does a hectare large. compare to an acre? I believe it's a little bit bigger than an acre. Is a hect is, is a hectare like a? Uh, is that like a, a metric acre? Or is it just how many guys named Hector you can? <laughs> how many how many hectares are there picking grapes? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> one way to spin that. Because <laughs> I mean, you need at least fifteen like square feet for one hectare, right? I thought hectare was so in the bottle. One, like, one, I think I'm a pick of grapes. One, hect- <laughs> one hectare is two point four seven one acres. So looking at so that's a, almost nine hundred to a thousand acres there for four hundred hectares. Yeah, yeah. So my guess is in elevation too. You seldom get like just one spot at an elevated spot. So if you've got that much space, what we're actually talking about is, you know, some change in elevation too, uh, especially along like a river valley. Like Probably like some terracing Hebron. going on. Yeah, especially if it's in like an old area that didn't get flooded in side of a dammed up river for the Wells Cat on a side of a volcano. Are there volcanoes in Spain? Hmm. I would be willing to say yes. It's an interesting question. I, I, are there, I'm actually re- are there mountains in Spain? That, uh... <laughs> there are mountains, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Rob. Finca Agricola desde 1645. Ah, 60 mil. So, uh, what they're saying is from 1645 meters down to 600 meters. Oh, so they're, so that's, it, they're is talk- about, it is all about this range and depth of. So the they're talking. They're within. talking about meters when they say 1645. That wasn't the year they started. That the family's been making wine. Maybe it is since the since 1645. Wouldn't that uh, say on your day? 600 altitude uh, in this making pure wine. Um, with respectable variety and local variety, produce, produce locally, yeah, with respective varieties produced locally uh, at 400 acres. Uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Actually, Rob was totally on that because later on, established 1645. He's totally right. I, I got jumping on it, but uh, I'm still going to go with that. It, it does, I don't speak it, it, it but I can read a little bit of it. I mean, it, so I, I think what I recall is that Penetis is like a little hot box region just inside of the uh, the front range, the coastal range. Stuff. Do either of you guys remember anything about the Zarello that I'm sure Chris told us all about? But um, uh, I think it was preceded by a lot. Of, oh, this is a really cool grape um, that you don't see a lot. Um, I think it's used primarily in blends, possibly. So it is purely to the coastal region, uh, right, right in Catalonia and around Barcelona. So, so it is I, close to Andorra. I remember now. Yes. So <laughs> somewhat. Zarello is one of the main grapes used in cava. Yep. And this is a still version. That's what it was. That's why it smells like cava. That's what it was. The the fog is lifting. The the midday tasting multiple. Now would it be Zarello or Chorello? Probably Chorello. Chorello is what I remember him saying when. Uh, but when it's got like it. a really cool like lemon zesty smell to it, like nose on it. Yeah, that was a very quiet little pause right there. So actually, it's not the Ebro. Yeah, if it's as far north as uh, um, Zorello. Zorello. Barcelona, it's purely that coastal Zorello. river. It is Zorello. Is it Zorello or Zorello? He's saying Zorello. And we heard Chirillo. Like a really soft Z, like so this Zorello. I think this is really kind of opening up a thing here. <laughs> 
But yeah, it is just these coastal rivers inside, um, up and against the Sierra de Morales, which contains three different uh, subregions, which Alpenes, uh, Garaf, and Baipenes. So there's high Penedes and low Penedes, and then there's this unique coastal region uh, called the Garaf, which there's like a whole park there. So if you ever wonder if there's giraffes in Spain, the answer is yes, but it's only for viniculture. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> what the, the rain falls on the plains in Spain, but mainly on the rain falls in Spain, but mainly on the plains and not the draft or something. There you go. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. So I, I even got Rob to remember a a nursery rhyme about Spanish topography. Okay, so now that we've now that we've dissected as much as we can the bottle and the location, the wine itself. Um, Josh mentioned he thought he got some cava. Yeah, I, I get a little nuttiness there, like mm-hmm. uh, we would in a cava. Um, the lemon. But there's is... also something else there. And I'm not sure if I'm going to go with lemon on it. Because to me, there's like a... Kind of a licorice. Oh. The producer just asked me to do something real quick. I'm sorry. Apologize. It's not a bad move. I really yeah. don't feel like making any espresso. So. Uh, yeah, it was time to close. Um, so um, I get almost like a like a faint licorice in the back end there. Uh, I mean, am I the only one, or do you? you... I mean, I, I guess I can get a little, little lemon on the front too, but it's like digging deep on the back end. It's more like fennel. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll give. I'll go there instead, instead of licorice. Instead of like straight licorice root. Yeah. It's more I'll, like the green. Yeah. Of like fennel, like fennel fronds. Yeah, I'll go there. Yeah, not the hearts, not the seed, but digging into the actual like. Uh, fennel grows a lot like celery or something, yeah. so it has that little green leaf. Yeah, it's right. like if you handled the fronds a little too roughly, you got like that weird little green kind of. Also, I mean those those things you're talking about anise and. Licorice and, and fennel, they kind of have this uh, palate effect, like a numbing type uh, buzzing effect. Are you getting that? Now on the palate, no, I'm I'm getting a nice crisp lemony um, wine there. Yeah, Almost and and like Jeff, yeah, we test. we did uh, Google it. Um, Nick, Nicholas Alexander says one <laughs> hectare equals one grapevine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, it, who knows? Maybe there's something to it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the I wine. I a little effervescence. I can't tell if that's just like that kind of lemon zest quality or if that's just the nature of this wine, but. Uh, I mean, I even see, like, bubble retain on, on the inside of the glass. But uh, more than that, I think that's just a texture that kind of goes with that fennel lemon zesty. It's got this peppery bite, but it's got this tartness. It's kind of really fun. This is a, a nice little interesting wine. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to... What do you think about this with shellfish? <clears throat> just like oyster roast. I don't know that I would lean into oysters uh-huh. with this as much because I think the brine of the oyster might be a little much okay. depending on where the oysters are from. If you have like a sweeter oyster, maybe I might go mussels. I was I was gonna say mussels, and depending on where the clams are from and how they're cooked, yeah, possibly clams. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would definitely say mussels reach out to me more with this one. Yeah, and actually scallops. If yeah, you did like butter poached or something, like a really mild flavor scallop, I think it'd go well. And I also think the mussels, you can go a little step further with like a Thai mussel, like Thai chili sauce. You could probably do that. Yeah, yeah. a little, little light. I think the garlic 
is really what's gonna make that pop <coughs> with the Thai with the Thai sauce, that little bit of spice going on with it. Uh, I'm a. I really like. I I remember this. this one pretty clearly. The, the more it, the more I taste it, out. yeah. The yeah. more I taste it, it's, it's popping out to me. Um, I, I mostly just met the entire mollusca uh, genus. That's fine, guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ceviche, I think, <laughs> sorry, sorry to strip apart your. Uh, I think this would be really cool with ceviche. Yeah. Yeah. I like think, with all I mean, that citrus, I mean, let's and like let's the, throw in a Spanish so, I mean, dish with the talking, Spanish wine. We're talking the most popular or, or important and and recognized historic I mean, er, er, wine else region. Is say uh, it, but you know, a paella around Barcelona. This is this stuff's making it out to. Uh, I don't know that Ibiza, I would do paella with it because there are a lot of spices in paella that I think might overpower this. Um, namely, the paprika and the saffron. I don't know that saffron would play well with this. Saffron's got that like dirty earthy flavor going yeah. on. Yeah, he's. I feel like um, the paella is a way to like bring the seashore inland with some, with some inland taste with the with the, um, the spice of the plains with the pig. You know, you kind of like blend together all things in Spain. <coughs> That's maybe more of an Andalusian dish than Catalonian. Uh, with the Catalonian. Um, we may not see like the true Basque squid and ink, but we're going to see that more northern ter- ter- uh, Mediterranean style. Um, mm, squid ink pasta. Yeah. Uh, but I, I definitely think, you know, this whole thing just would entertain a, a seafed diet. Mm-hmm. And, and just look, it's like literally coastal range, coastal rivers. And coastal rivers are known for m- m- mollusks, which you guys are talking about, you know, eating mussels uh, with this, which I think is. You know, would I want like an oyster roast Carolina style? No, but like some, like uh, abalone. Uh, yeah, could just kill it. You know. Now I will say like sardines or razorback herring or anchovies that weren't salt cured would be really good with this. Like I'll if you had if you had like the whole little anchovies and you like pan fried them before they got like filleted and thrown into a can with. An entire five pound bag of salt in one little can, I think they'd be really good like that. I was just gonna say conch fritters would go good with a little like spicy Asian. <laughs> with the bacalao I've got at the house, this would go really well. The salt cod I've got at the house, like if we did salt cod fritters. Hmm. So I'm I'm detecting we might. Have I could to... also just. Do I this have two and a half right? pounds of salt cod sitting on a counter at I the can, house. I, I could do this with. Uh... With, with smoked salmon, capers, cream cheese, everything bagel. Yeah. I got capers in the bag. Let's get some capers, bro. I could just, I could do this. No. Any dish with capers is better without. There's a balance, though. It's what, not just. Wait, wait, did I just fall into that? This is Nick, not, what did you do to me? This, I like this. This is not a bad thing, Rob. <laughs> You've had a realization. This is good for you. <laughs> Y'all are both evil. It's all right. There's a brine. I just, I just, to this. I just felt it to Nick's Nick's mind control. It's unmatched by say like the acidity that we saw in, um, with the pe- p- uh, pinier pick pole. But there's a similarity here. And the the, aci- the acidity away. is low on this though. But it's it, crisp, but it's low acidity. Yeah, and so um, I'm guessing maybe you know the two sides we talked about Andorra. And, and the Pyrenees, I'm wondering, you know, does that the Languedoc of France, which is southeast France, get a lot more of that Mediterranean moisture than, say, just down in Barcelona and uh, the region in, you know, Penedes that we're here in uh, northeast Spain? Uh, is the really, is that dry line really that dramatic that we're going to see that much more of a, a briny uh, kind of item than that <clears throat> acidity? I'm also detecting, I'm thinking that this probably doesn't see a lot of oak time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably a stainless steel or I'm not clay. detecting any oak. Yeah. And there's definitely no mallow introduced either. Uh, traditional Spanish wines love earthen uh, clay. And... I'm kind of Spanish. digging this, guys. I really like this. Um, $24 a bottle. I'd say it's easily worth that. I mean, it's not going to be your everyday, 
Yeah, it's table a really wine. fun bottle. Ah, uh, this is cool. Yeah, Kinda it's a cool. Nice. It's a cool shape. Yeah, it, it sticks out. Looks like. Uh, How deep is the punt? It's in there. Hmm. It's in there, man. I just I one think knuckle. This is fun. It almost looked when you pulled it out. I was like, is Rob pulling out an Armagnac bottle? What's going on? <laughs> that or a port or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's not no. Cool. Oh, that's like I, tomorrow. I got to call ABC. Oh man, the day that we whip a port out on the show, that'll be a good one. <laughs> Rob, can we worry about tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yeah, it, it just things pop in my head. You know how it happens. You never stop being the boss. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my bacalao tomorrow. Bacalao, but but balacol. You don't have to wear your mask anymore. You got no, your. No, that's vaccine. a balaclava. I'm talking bacalao. It's oh. salt cod. No. The cool pistachio. And it's, honey por- it's Portuguese salt oil. cod. Go ahead and bring it in because I'm not getting the right picture in my head yet. Yeah, bring it on Wednesday hey. so I don't have to be here. Josh, can we worry about Wednesday on Wednesday? <laughs> I'm just. Br- we can cook with it. We just have to soak it for a while. I'm really liking this phrase. <laughs> yeah, we we gotta we gotta soak it three for times. Hours. I feel like I've been soaked three times. Speaking of which, that probably prompts me the fact that it's we're due for some ratings. Yeah, why and don't I we... don't mean the Nielsen ratings. <clears throat> no, we're we're moving However, right if along. You tonight. Want to rate us? Josh will tell you about that later. Yeah, we're we're actually moving right along tonight. Surprisingly, Josh is not distracting Nick tonight, and we're staying on point. Oh man, low blows, love them. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I can't imagine something I could rather want. <laughs> All so, right, starting out. Um, we should the, rate that burp. That last thing was like a two at best. So I, I don't even realize I burped tonight. Island I heard Brands. Something coming out of not even mic. Island Brewery, but Island's Brands, Island Brands Incorporated out of Auburndale, Florida. Uh, the Island Lemonada. You got the job. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, this is a really interesting. I'm not even gonna say it's really interesting. It's. I mean, it's pretty a straightforward beer. Pretty much a straightforward. Um, I'm gonna give this one a solid thumb and a half. <laughs> okay, that's for the price point and the fact that it is exactly what it advertises itself as, and it is a easy drinking summer crusher. In my mind, um, if it's hot outside, this is a good beer. I can. I can agree with that. It's got it's got that s- little bit of sweetness from like the sweet lemonade. It's got that malt background, so you n- you're not forgetting that you're drinking a beer with something in it. Um, it's it's solid. I'd have it with food, but or just without. I mean, it, it, I'd put it in my tackle bag and take it down with me to the lake. Um, yeah, I, I'm right. I'm right there with you, Josh. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think, like you said, I'm going to give it a one five as well because it is just what it says on the can. It is what it is. Um, This is very reminiscent to me of any number of summer Uh, shandies. uh, I'll give you that one just because you're getting back in the swing of things. Um, But it's it's like Josh's trickle down. Any number of summer shandies. um, But it's solid, easy drinking summer beer. Outside in the heat. Beach. Uh... Backyard barbecue, mowing the lawn. Um, you say mow, are you suggesting I might have more job satisfaction if I just put a beer in that cup holder? <laughs> it might, might make the 90 degree days easier. I know that. Um, but, you know, or like Josh said, take take it, throw it in the cooler, go fishing. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's easy. It it's an easy I summer beer. Down to the lake. I like the one. Fi- I like the one five. Um, Nick? Um Actually, guys, I was really pleasantly surprised by this. I feel like um, the two beers we sampled tonight, while they're both in the same cooler, maybe they don't belong in the same cooler. Um, and I feel like they kind of had like each other's label. Like the one I didn't want to take seriously ended up being the one I took a little more seriously. And, True point. And the one that I thought I would be like, oh, this is, I kind of was left a little bit like. I feel like, like you jumped my mind with that comment. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to go too far with just like trash and all Oh, oh the man. Other. Not like I wanted any of that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh. Like, uh, oh, you're good. 
We uh, <laughs> yeah. Who's Rob? No, Rob. We're good. <laughs> we're we're good. I pour you some out of my glass, guys. Yeah, no. no, we're we're good. Uh, I saved you some, uh, but I licked them all. Um, I ever tell you that I I used to like when I was a kid. I had a really bad problem about licking all the flavor off the Pringles and putting them back in the can. Oh my god! Now I know <laughs> how much you grew up an only child. If I did that in my household, you guys they, would not know me. How did they not get soggy? <laughs> did you eat They did. <laughs> my favorite, who, who my favorite thing was there? making <laughs> duck lips out of them. Oh, you know why like Ken's always upset? He's like, man, I hate Pringles. They've been stale since I've ever seen them. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had one that's Tastes been... like they licked all the yeah, flavor yeah, off the factory. Yeah, mom and dad quit buying Pringles. <laughs> I never saw Pringles in my house. I, saw I think, the, I think, the, last, I think yeah. the last comment was like, you know, sometimes other people want to eat them too. <laughs> <laughs> then I, get your own. <laughs> I, have no, I have no doubt about who said that. Ken, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> they get two. <laughs> one for me, one for you. <laughs> I would say, guys, I'll get back to the beer so we don't get Josh in too much trouble tonight. Um, <laughs> we're stopping domestic... Disputes right now. Uh, the island beer is, in fact, beer with lemon flavor in it. And yeah, I'll I agree. totally give that a thumbs up just for being beer. Then how cool is a limonada? Is it 1.5 cool? I don't know about 1.5 cool. I feel about a 1.35 on this, uh, which for me is I will definitely drink it. Uh, am I going to reach right back in and grab another? I don't know. I might come back to it another time and be like, what's the other flavor they got? You know, I want to find out. I want this one. Um, yeah. I, do you want me to roll right in? Since, yeah. Since I'm giving a one three five on the island. Yep. And I already mentioned compare and contrast. We're just going to go right into better days. And I've seen it. We've all seen better days. And Sweetwater, you know better. You've seen better days. I thought that first issue on the Berliner Vice was a little bit low. This thing, is this what you did with all the like evaporated product from the Berliner Vice? Because this thing is barely palatable. Super fruit. I don't know anything super about it. The only word I found to be correct on here is kind of. It should just say, better days. Kind of beer. Kind of, sort of. Sort of. Yeah. It, it, and we, then we find out in the sub-labeling it's actually a malt beverage, which was the hardest thing to read. And I know all beer is technically malt beverage. But what we know about labeling and what that means is that means almost... It's not beer. It's this other thing in between wine and beer that's not mead or beer. It's like seltzer. So yeah, they could make it out of anything <laughs> they want. Well, uh, uh, to be honest, malt beverage just means that it doesn't fit into a canonically agreed upon style of beer. Okay, so you're going all BJCP on us there. Well, the BJCP is not exactly how like the what I guess the FDA would like dictate. Labeling laws and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so labeling laws where they meet like brewing categories. It, it's like going to the German Rhein Heights Gebot. If you brew any, if you add anything besides like the four agreed upon ingredients, it's no longer beer. It's a malt beverage. So it could be, it could be a beer with blank, well, but because whatever they added to it, it just disqualifies it from being labeled as a beer. So right. it probably is a beer, but well, it didn't taste like a beer because they put something in there that is not. And normally in beer could be the super fruit just not being recognized categorically yeah i mean so but my point is simply <clears throat> it's definitely not an ipa there are hops in it it's an ale um the four percent it's light it's locale it has a dry finish there's a fruit essence in it we couldn't figure out what super fruit it is maybe it's all of them i don't know i i just wasn't i wasn't sure i wasn't convinced uh, I feel like I drank it all. It was cold. It comes in a can. It's next to other beers. Uh, I probably gave the person who handed it to me a thumbs up. I'm not sure I give this beer a thumbs up. Uh, I'm going to go 0. 0.9. Okay. Like 0. 0.99. How many calories does it have? 100. Less than 100. Yep. Okay. <laughs> cool. I'm going to go with a solid 0. 0.75. Um this drinking a beer called better days is not supposed to make me realize that all of my better days have been drinking anything besides this. Um, that's kind of how I feel with this. I don't like it. I mean, if somebody gave it to me out of a cooler, would I drink it? 
There's a few questions to tick off. Do I already have a buzz? <clears throat> Do I not have a buzz and I really want one? If I really want a buzz, would I drink this? Because it probably won't give me a buzz. I like things like that. Um, I don't like the way it tastes. I don't like the way it feels. It's not. It's not a beer for me. I'm not going to say it's a terrible beer. I mean, I'm sure there are people out there who are like, if you are looking for low calorie, low octane beer, I mean, this is probably exactly what you're looking for. But that's, I don't drink beer and then all of a sudden think about the calorie content of the beer I'm drinking. I drink beer based on flavor. And it's what I just drank. And my waistline reflects that. But if you are calorie conscious, this is probably not a bad call for you because it does, for the most fact, taste kind of like a beer. So they did get the kind of part right. Um, it's just not for me. So that get get your port. Hmm? You, that that's you're done. I leave over to me. That's it. If right. I keep going, it's just gonna get worse. All right. Okay. So for me, um, here. so for me, it's trying to get into that category of uh. hey, let's get something for the. Ladies who are coming into the brewery that are looking to drink a seltzer, and we don't have seltzers. They made it. Um, and it's a near beer. Not as in a non-alcoholic beer. If you get her to go on the brewery tour in Atlanta at Sweetwater with you, and then she chooses this, you really need to think twice about your relationship. So... The to me the best thing that was in this can was on the can. It was a little saying on the back giving the yeah you know, the fu that's the, the, the fu to 2020. Um, and I think this beer was made in 2020. So I <laughs> right guess the, the it's right it. there with it. Um, <laughs> they tried to capture what. Yeah, the, tasted the, like this and beer was a quick swing the, around. This beer was the essence of 2020. Some fruit no one wanted. Uh, lack of taste. No lack of taste. This beer had COVID. It had no taste. The can doesn't even look attractive. That it was is, hard to read. Yeah. Very difficult to interpret. It had very little. It did have a little bit of fruit smell to Do it. Do you remember but, it? But it had no taste. So this this beer had COVID. I'm giving that a 0. 0.5. The only way you could drink that beer is if you had COVID. Okay. This is getting dark. Quick. Yeah, it's, it's getting dark. So we're going to move on. <laughs> Sweetwater just banned me from the Yeah, we, w- we will link them. <laughs> I do like you guys. Uh, we I do really like you. Am. That's why we're giving you a hard time. Stop this beer. Yeah, that's why we're giving you a hard time. There are plenty of beers that we've tasted that we like, and we have a lot of you on the shelf. And I drink just so much sweet water on a yearly basis. Yeah, the, the green <laughs> can alone, the extra pail, the yellow can, I live off those. My buddy, the blue can. Um, I don't know where we went with this blue and yellow can. So <sighs> we're going to move on to the can samwa, can sumwa. Easy for you to say. I'm, I am so confused <laughs> on that. That water name. Anyway, it's Zarello is the the wine. Um, it is one of the uh, common wines or grapes used for cava. Um, this is a this is a still version. Consommé. Consommé. Yeah, it's not consommé. No, no um, that's spelled a different way. In but it's from uh, <laughs> Panetes, <laughs> uh, Spain, and it's twenty four dollars a bottle. This is a nice, interesting little white wine. Um, if you're a Sauvignon Blanc drinker and you're looking for something that's just not a little as high in acid, you just don't feel like the high acid of the, for the night, check this guy out. Um, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. You, if you like Albarino, I think you're going to like this guy. Um, if you... Uh, definitely if you like kava, I mean, if you, well, I was going to say if you don't want the bubbles, but that's just silly because who doesn't want bubbles when they can have them? Um, so all in all, I like this wine. It's a very interesting little wine. I, I can't believe that I didn't remember it until I tried it again. Um, one, six, five. 
Cool. I'll follow up. All right. Um, I'm actually going to go one seven on it. Just a little bit higher. I really, really like the flavor profile going on with this. That briny. There's a lot going on. Because, like, I'm, as everyone watching the show knows, we are pretty much all universally. Which fans doesn't include you, apparently. I don't rewatch the shows. I, <laughs> I don't need to rewatch them. I'm part of it. You were here. Except for last week. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. And then I could just be blissfully ignorant of everything. Right. And I ain't seen you in a while. So I um, go on. I I, I interrupted you. I, I what? apologize. Huh? Huh? What? Huh? Is yeah. that bee sting? What? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the yellow jacket sting. <laughs> you know, uh, for for those who don't didn't know, the only thing that bit Josh, the only bite Josh got out on on his fishing trip was from all the no seams in his tent that night. And then as soon as he gets back for work the first day, he gets out of his car, the only bite and a yellow about. jacket stings clever. him on the earlobe. Uh, not on the earlobe, in the ear. Oh, in it, the was ear. Like in, it was like in there. Like yeah. it flew and got caught, and it got mad because it couldn't get out of like the folds of my ear. For, for a whole and day, Josh knew what it was like to be hearing impaired. Yeah, I could not hear out of my left ear. That was, was, we actually, that's part of our sensitivity training, Josh. We no, didn't that, tell you we scheduled that for your return from vacation. We just wanted uh, you to relate. Well, you know, to I, I could, I can live without that one happening before. again. That, that was, that was <laughs> an experience. Um, but yeah, no, one seven, absolutely. Like uh, we all love Albarino here. Um, there's that little bit of that brininess. You can tell it's like a coastal kind of grape, especially with Spain, because you always get that kind of Mediterranean salt in there. Um, I like it on its own. I would like it with food too. Um, there's a lot of potential with this, and the price point twenty four. Twenty four. It's really not bad for the quality of the wine you're getting here. It's a really cool wine. And if you haven't had it, you should have it, especially if you like good white wine. Um, without a doubt, I would 10 out of 10, I would have another bottle of this. I will probably buy one to take home at some point in time over the next couple of weeks. Wow. Actually, uh, what did you say the price? 24 I might help Josh drink one of those bottles. Oh. I don't remember inviting you. <laughs> I just like the idea that Josh was going to spend 24 bucks on something. <laughs> um, guys, uh, Ken Smith, it's... Uh, listen, they're actually one of the original producers of the Montagna, which is a direct shoot-off of this, which carries a color characteristic of pink that is like none other of the Parayeda. Parayada, Parayada, whatever. It's it gets into this whole thing, man. You guys never had it. We don't have it here. It's like a ten point something percent. It's a stupid. How about, our, how about this one here? <laughs> well, that's why it comes in that bottle because those guys make that stuff, which is basically a Spanish Armagnac. Yeah. Whatever. Paradia, yeah, lost. Lost. That's the Spanish translation for anyone. Para Dios. Um, the Zarello. Is that what we're going with? Zarello. We're not saying Chorello. Anymore. Yeah, we're saying Zarello because that's, that's what the little guy on my phone uh, said was Zarello. Well, the not so little guy who tasted it with us called it Chorello. So, well, I don't know. It's up to you to, what, what you're going to say to his face or not. Me? I'm going to be like, hey. The little guy on the phone said Zarello. It's Zarello. You know what's more important right now? You're Rather rating. They were waiting on about what's going to happen you know, tomorrow or Wednesday. I'll worry about that tomorrow or Wednesday. I'm going to talk about Zarello right now. Uh, this wine, uh, resembling a Vino Verde or Albarino, kind of like Josh said, doesn't quite have that same soft texture of those West Coast uh, varietals of Spanish coastals. Uh, this has something uh, more akin to that Mediterranean that salt of earth feel uh it's very dry uh it has fruitiness but that fruitiness is like in this entertaining lemon zest um all these nice really friendly tones that would go great with the things that we mentioned mussels uh other treats from the sea uh dude some go better than others yeah but i think anything basically that you pick out of the sea and throw at this wine this has probably got a good chance of tasting pretty good in the pairing uh, but more importantly, this wine itself is very crisp and fulfilling. 
Uh, we didn't get a lot of barrel feel, so that rich texture doesn't have this lingering feel, so we tend to call that crisp. I loved it. That crispness matched with this like balance in the acidity that has this like briny quality. So at the same time I'm getting like lemon peel, I'm still like experiencing like the saltiness of a dry vine. Uh, I really appreciated that. I could really like feel like Mediterranean breezes up like a dry cliffside or something, you know, ah, whatever. Uh, this is lemon classic historic piece of Barcelona and tourism to Barcelona. This is like foundational piece of uh, Cava, like Rob said. So we got to honor it a little. That's part of what Penna is region is really about. Uh, this wine itself, uh, I like it. It's very affordable. Maybe it seems a little bit expensive for typical Spanish wines. This is not your typical Spanish wine. This is something that's used for a prized product delivered in a still table-ready food pairing machine. Uh, your friends are going to love you for opening this bottle. And at a simple price of $24, Josh might be able to afford to let Nick try some. Uh, for that, I got to give it a 1.7. I'm surprised I'm the low, I'm the low rating on that. I, that's what I get for going first. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so that's going to bring us to the end of it for tonight. Um, tell them what you got to tell them, Josh. Yeah, Josh. Oh, yeah. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, just remember that none of us have actually eaten Spam in quite a long time. And then if you would like to bring us a can of Spam so that we can play around with it culinarily, um, that would actually be greatly appreciated. Spam. Treat treat is a, a, an acceptable substitute, but we do prefer Spam if we're going to play with it. With bacon. Eh, let's just go straight Spam that we can get with the crazy flavors, okay. you know? Um, aside from that, if you are having fun watching us, uh, please do remember to look below the video like comment and subscribe and if you do bring us a can of spam you know it doesn't hurt to throw in a recipe that you uh you got for it too um but yeah thanks for chiming in and uh if you don't tell us what you're thinking we won't know what you're thinking we're not mind readers we're not psychic if we were psychic we wouldn't be doing this and mary beth from maryland since you subscribed to us yesterday or sunday on uh, or no saturday on uh youtube watch it let me let us know if you heard your name, and uh, hopefully you got back safe and sound. And uh, oh yeah, Kellen and Savannah too. Well, Savannah's not going back to Maryland, but Kellen is. Um, and Nick still remembers everything that happened that day. So, on that note, wow, you guys have a good night, and uh, we'll see you next week. Later. <laughs>